probably the most significant difference between the new and the old version of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual is the um, uh, organization of it. There are much more precise diagnoses now, which means that a change had to be made in the way diseases are organized. Um, if you had to say one thing that summarizes the difference in organizational approach to naming psychiatric disorders, it would probably be that the new edition uses a dimensional approach rather than a categorical approach. So a dimensional approach means that we see patients as being on a spectrum between two different poles as opposed to being in pigeonholes um, that are assigned uh, at different places. Probably the most well-known one is going to be autism spectrum disorders because in the past there were disorders such as Asperger disorder, which I think a lot of people in the public are very familiar with, which represented, it was sort of uh, colloquially known as a high-functioning autism, um, which, that, which is no longer present as its own entity, but it's part of a spectrum of disorders that go all the way from a profoundly disabled autistic individual to someone who's really able to function in society to a certain extent, but has features in common with autism. That's what I mean by spectrum disorders. From the patient's perspective, there's not going to be a significant difference um, in the way they seek psychiatric care and the way they are diagnosed and treated. I think that the difference is going to be in terms of the way psychiatry conceptualizes the di these diagnoses and develops treatments. Um, hopefully the patients will then see a more specific diagnosis and a more specific treatment, but the diagnostic names of things are probably not as important from the patient's perspective than they are from the physician's perspective. What it means is that a lot of research has taken place in the last 19 years since the last diagnostic manual. And neuro, we're, psychiatry is beginning to enjoy the benefits of neuroscience research. And we now have the ability to really look at a much more fine level of detail about the disorders and we've discovered that some of them need to be conceptualized differently because the research has caught up. We need to teach students and residents that this is an evolving field that's research driven and evidence based and um, when there's a good reason to change, they should change.